I am so excited to share with you the result of all of our preserving from this summer. So really quickly, before I get started with the pantry tour, I always feel like it's important to give a little bit of background and information. We grow all of our own vegetables. We don't purchase any from the store and we also this year were able to grow all of our own meat. Um, as far as the fruit goes, we planted lots of fruit trees, lots of shrubs, but uh, those can take several years until you get a good harvest. So a lot of the fruit that you'll see here in the pantry, that is bought from local farmers, which I love to support. And then the other thing worth mentioning here is we are in a new home now. And in our new home, we decided to make a cold room. This is different from a root cellar because a root cellar is surrounded by earth and that's what keeps it cool but the cold room is run by a temperature control system which uses electricity. I would much rather have a root cellar by far, but where we live, the water table is really high and it's difficult to have proper drainage. It just would take a lot of money right now. So we just decided to put that project off for a little while and do the cold room as a temporary thing until we could uh, do the root cellar properly and get all the drainage correct. If you walk outside of our cold room, we have a different pantry there that we keep all of our dry storage in. This other pantry just stays right around room temperature at 68 degrees Fahrenheit and we store all of our sweet potatoes and winter squash there because it's a better environment for them. The cold room tends to be pretty moist and we keep it at 48 degrees Fahrenheit. The extra humidity and cold temperature is great for the potatoes and other root crops. It's also great for my fermented foods, which I store in here. Properly canned foods can be stored at room temperature, but we keep them in the cold room because of space needs. So now that you have all the details, let's get started with the pantry tour. Okay, are you going? Oh, I've been going. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so these are all black beans. No, oh, I have a hair on me. Okay. <laughs> so, hairless black beans. <laughs> and then this is marinated roasted red peppers. This is corn. And then we have a peach barbecue, a regular tomato based barbecue, and then ketchup. And then this is some cowboy candy given to us by our family. Thank you, family. Um, and then uh, pickle relish. <laughs> this is pizza sauce. And I label it as pizza sauce, but we pretty much use it just as a tomato sauce in any recipe that requires that we use the pizza sauce. I just like this recipe because it's a little bit thicker than um, regular tomato sauce. And then more black beans here. Down in this row, this is like our family's favorite row right here, salsa. We have mild salsa, we have medium salsa. So uh, this is... <laughs> this is spaghetti sauce. <laughs> you just point and I'll talk. Okay. You know? <laughs> okay, go. This is spaghetti sauce. We love spaghetti sauce. <laughs> we eat it a lot. Okay. And then we have diced tomatoes, more salsa, just couldn't fit that up there. And then more black beans. These are all diced tomatoes. I just did a variety of different sizes just because Certain recipes call for different sizes, and then I can make the most of the canning lids, which are in short supply these days. This is all of our potatoes. They are in much better shape this year than they have been in years past because we keep this room cold, and so they're still looking really good, and they're not sprouted like crazy like they were last year. How many pounds per crate like that? Yeah. So we <laughs> harvested 365 pounds of potatoes. So I have a lot of crates of these. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven crates. Probably 40, 40 to 50 pounds in each one. Yeah, 40 yeah. to 50 pounds of potatoes. Yeah. They are hard to move. Yeah. And Cam and the kids made me these crates. I really like these crates. Um, from they recycle them from pallets that we had we had a lot of pallets because we just built this house so not we but <laughs> we hired people to build our house the house was built <laughs> pallets remained yes cool 
Okay, so here at the top are grape jam. This is lemon, strawberry jam, peach butter. This is cranberry sauce. And then we have apple butter. And in the past, I've done a lot of jams, but I've learned over the years of canning to become a little bit more practical. And we don't go through all that much jam. So I've just done like a little bit less and less every year and it's actually worked out perfect so i think we're right at the right amount now this is white chicken chili and several jars of those just for like a quick meal and then these are all chicken broth even though they look kind of different they're all the same <laughs> and then this one is a vegetable broth on this shelf i have a lot of our fermented things just kind of here in the middle because this is easy for us to access and we access these a lot use them and then put them back so this is a red pepper it's a hot pepper salsa it's really good but it's really spicy and then we have sauerkraut right here this is a hot pepper lime chili mix fermented and then this is salt preserved lemons. We really like that with pasta and a whole bunch of other things that I can't think of right now. <laughs> and then in here is chicken broth. I just couldn't fit these on that upper shelf. And then we have Cajun cowpea soup. Last year I didn't do as many. This year I did more just because we loved it so much. We eat it all the time for like a lunch or when we don't have time to make something else. And then down here, this is pie filling, apple pie filling. This is all of our applesauce. And then down here at the bottom is some sliced peaches. And this is all of our grape juice. I got a juicer this year and I was able to make a lot more grape juice. That's your favorite shelf. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. So then down here at the bottom, these are the potatoes. Right here we have some apple butter and then some lavender. This is pumpkin seeds and then these are all sliced um, green and red peppers. And I put some of these smaller jars because I actually ran out of quart size jars this year and couldn't find any at the store. Then this is dried corn. But now we're moving on to the dried foods and it's always surprising when you're drying foods. It's, it takes a ton of food to like fill up this amount. So this is a yellow squash. We use that in soups and things. Anything that's cooked is usually a good candidate for using dried foods in. Yeah. Okay, so this is go-to pepper from our Korean expert back there. <laughs> These are just sliced red peppers. And then this is celery, and this one is sliced tomatoes, and then more of the yellow squash. This is the celery greens. Just add these to soups and stuff. And then this is leeks. And over here we have more tomatoes. This has some random things in here, like kidney beans that I grew and didn't get a very good harvest from red raspberry leaves. Well, this row is pretty simple. It's all sliced dried apples. This is our favorite way to eat apples throughout the winter. So as you see, there is a lot. These are all the half gallon sized jars. So down here we have uh, garlic in here. And these crates aren't ones that Cam and the kids made me. Um, Cam found these second hands at a place just to fill in temporarily until they could make me some more. So then over here we have yellow onions and this doesn't look like much but I use so many onions in just my regular canning that I actually had way way more than that and then it just all gets used. <laughs> so these are my red onions and then over in here our apples okay so down here at the bottom this is more potatoes and they're and they're hard to move oh, okay and then in here 
This is all of our cabbage and I keep them in bags to keep the humidity high. Um, they just keep a little bit better and longer that way. I know there's also other ways to store them in like a root cellar type situation, but this is just working for us right now in a pinch. Just gonna do some like <laughs> dance. <laughs> this is one of my fermentation cracks. It actually doesn't have anything in it right now. I'm just storing it because it's too cold in here to ferment. So I have a bunch of the canning rings in this one. <laughs> And then down here is all of our storage for lids, the wide mouth and the regular mouth. Luckily, I was able to secure some more lids for this year. I do not want to run out. One of these packs usually lasts me like a year. So this is like a two year supply. And then I have some jalapenos here that need preserved still. These are just some mylar bags of dried sliced red peppers that I did. Just kind of experimenting with that. The last of the jars that I have left. And then in here I have, this is a big box of pears. I don't know if I want to get that out right now. No, it's heavy. Pears, they'll trust, they trust. And then here is more apples that I have. These are... This one is John Gold, and these are Jonathan. And then in this one, these are all Jonathan Apple. Cool. So we have all of our butternut squash here. I have one Long Island cheese pumpkin because it was a volunteer plant, it just came up. I didn't grow any pumpkins this year because I had a ton last year and I preserved all those into a pumpkin puree, so didn't need to grow anymore. This right here is apple cider vinegar in the making. Um, my sister was here and she was teaching me how to do this. I'm still sort of learning how to do this, so don't ask me about it yet. <laughs> I'm not ready to talk about it. And then I just keep my seeds out here. It's too moist inside of our cold room to keep seeds in there, honestly. So. They stay out here. This is all of our sweet potatoes. We harvested these, brought them in, and then let them cure. And then um, now we have them all stored. We got just under 200 pounds for the sweet potatoes, which is a little bit less than a year supply for us normally, but we actually had a way better um, regular potato year. So that amount should be enough. Okay, and the last thing here that I'll share just because it's here, it's not really part of a pantry, but it's part of creating a pantry because you grow all your food. So this is like our bulk seed storage in here. So I have like all of my cover crop stuff, plus um, a whole bunch of other large seeds. And we grow a lot of food, so it takes a lot of bulk. That is all for this pantry tour. Thank you guys for watching and we have more coming at you soon. Some good things.